Hi, everybody. I am here with Sasha Palladino. I'm Polly Conway, Senior Editor of TV at Common Sense Media. And Sasha Palladino is the executive producer of one of our recent Common Sense Media selections, Mira Royal Detective. Hi, Sasha. Hi. Thanks for nice being here. Thank you so much. Thanks for wanting to talk. Of course. I want to talk to anyone, <laughs> but especially you. <laughs> I know the feeling these days. Uh, conversation is a great thing yeah <laughs> totally um can you first off just tell us a little bit about you and your background and your most recent series sure um so yeah so my name is sasha paladino i'm a tv writer and producer i've been working in children's television for almost 20 years which is crazy to think um but yeah i've worked i started as a writer um, I've always been interested in telling stories and um, telling stories for kids, especially. I went to a performing arts school. My high school was the high school of performing arts and sort of the arts and kids were always connected in my mind. So I think that led to um, what I do now, um, which I love. And my newest show uh, is Mira Royal Detective, which started airing on Disney Junior um, two months ago. And we're super excited about it. Awesome. Um, so. May is Asian and Pacific American Heritage Month. Can you talk about why you wanted to work on a show that explores Indian and South Asian culture? Sure. So when Disney asked me if I would be interested in working on Mirror Royal Detective, I was so excited because I love doing deep dives into different cultures, cultures that are not my own. Um, some of the other things I've done besides making kids TV is working in documentaries and I've made documentaries in Africa and Italy. And one of the, the great things about that is getting to sort of dive into a culture and figure it out as an outsider and try to understand it. And the opportunity to do that on a big scale on a show like Mirror Royal Detective was something I couldn't resist, um, both for my own excitement of learning more about an, a, a culture that's not my own, and also the idea of how to make this culture uh, make a new culture accessible to kids who might not know about it and inspire them. And I should probably talk a little bit about the show, um, yeah, Mira totally. Royal Detective. Um, it's about a young girl named Mira who was appointed by the queen of her kingdom, Jalpur, to be the kingdom's royal detective. And the idea is that this kingdom has had a long line of detectives who have served the queen, but they've all been older men with mustaches. And Mira um, is the first girl and first kid to be given this role. And the queen sees something special in her. Mira has this amazing curiosity of spirit um, and empathy and um, just sort of perceptiveness. Um, and so that's why she is appointed in this role. And even though she's the royal detective, we really think of her as the people's detective because she helped everyone. She helped everyone in the kingdom, the royals, the people in town, the animals. Uh, Mira is friend to everyone. So it's about Mira, her adventures as a detective um, in Jalpur, which is a kingdom inspired by South Asian culture. Cool. I wanted to talk about the super exciting trend that I'm starting to see in animation and in real life. And that is that shows, um, animated shows, um, Mirror Royal Detective is an example, Molly of Denali is another example, um, with deep diversity and understanding of the culture from the animators to the sound people to the musicians, um, everyone is, you know, part of that culture and it's not, you know, it's just great. Um, it's really, really exciting to see. And, you know, when I looked at the cast list for um, Mirror Royal Detective, I was like, everyone's South Asian, everyone's South Asian, they, they're doing it. Um, and I know that it, you know, it takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of extra resources. Um, but I wanted to talk about why you think that matters um, and how it worked when you did it on the show. Yeah, that's a great question. I think it's extremely important for kids to be able to see reflections of themselves and their lives and their culture on screen. And it's such a great time for that right now. There are so many great shows that are doing that. And that was why it really felt like an honor and a privilege and a responsibility when Disney asked me to be the executive producer, showrunner of Mirror Royal Detective. And I totally agree, it's so important to make sure that we're doing it right. And it's really hard, it's a lot of work, um, but it's something we thought about a lot. I mean, 
before I even said yes to the job, I had to think, okay, well, I'm a white guy. This is not my culture. In a way, like, what gives me the right to be the showrunner of this show? Um, and I had to think long and hard about it. And, um, and, and I think that stuff isn't easy, but it's important and it's productive to wrestle with those questions. Um, and right now it's, it, it's one of the most important things I feel like. Um, but so, so the answer that I came to was that what I could bring to this show is my experience as a storyteller and someone who has worked in kids TV for a long time, but that a big part of my job would be to listen. Um, it's not my culture. It's, um, it's that there are so many details and things that I don't know about. And so the key for us to making sure that the culture felt authentic, that the, the way we portrayed the culture felt authentic was to use as many, um, uh, collaborate with as many Indian and South Asian voices as possible. So really in every part of the show, um, we have um, Indian and uh, Indian American writers, artists, um, the entire voice cast is South Asian. Um, and then, you know, a lot of shows are done. Uh, we have a South Asian choreographer, we have musicians, it's every element of the show um, to, to really create that authenticity and really to do it right in a thoughtful and sensitive way. It's the only way I think we could do it. Um, and like I said, my job is to to make sure that all of those voices are coming together in harmony. You could say, um, but also make sure that the stories are engaging. That's what I'm good at, is figuring out how to tell stories that work for young audiences. Um, and, and really the only way this show could happen is as a collaboration. And I think that's the thing I'm most proud of, is that this show feels like a true collaboration. One other piece of that is, uh, you know, a lot of shows are animated overseas at studios um, in countries like Korea and India, and our show is animated in India. Um, and we work with an amazing studio there, Technicolor, and I was lucky enough to go there. I've been to India twice now. Uh, one of the things about being in India and working with our team there that was so important to see for us was to see how meaningful um, this project is for our Indian animators and how big a responsibility it is and how proud they are to be working on a show that represents their culture to the world. You know, this show, Disney shows air in over 150 countries. And so that idea that this show is going to be representing their culture, they don't take lightly. And so neither do we. Totally. One of the things that's been exciting for me, I've, you know, I've been doing this work for six years. And when I started, there was just nothing. Um, and one of the things we do at Common Sense Media is make recommendation lists for, you know. I know them well. I use yeah. them all the time. <laughs> um, and so now, you know, we have more than enough stuff um, starring and about um, Asian American families um, to really recommend a bunch of shows. And that is great. It's such a great development. I feel like things move so slowly sometimes. Um, but, you know, once they kind of reach a peak, it's like, okay, this is happening. This is really happening. Yeah, and then it becomes normal. Like, it, like it's, it's interesting because it, it has been a big deal. It's been great to see people respond to Mira, but it's also a reminder, like, wow, this is a new thing to see um, a show for kids that's for everyone that's where all the characters have brown skin. It's a big deal, but hopefully it just becomes normal and it won't be a big deal anymore. I think in a way that's one of our biggest markers of success. Totally. Um, so we just honored, we honored Mira as a Common Sense selection, which is awesome. Thank you. Uh, we are honored. Yeah. And um, <laughs> I'm a huge fan of Common Sense Media. I have three kids and I use your site all the time. So uh, it is an honor to be in that, uh, have that seal, that stamp. Thank you. Yay, of course. Um, what messages do you want families and kids to take away from the show? That's a great question. I, I think one of the main things is that Mira is someone who can solve problems uh, in very creative and sometimes unexpected ways. Um, she's a really aspirational character, I think, because she shows that if you kind of pay attention to what's around you, um, you'll kind of find everything you need. And it's not just paying attention to like the trees and the leaves, but it's paying attention to people. She's really empathetic and she's really good at reading people and thinking about other people. And I think that's a really important takeaway. Again, in this day and age, um, just being considerate and kind is one of the most important things, I think that kids can learn and, and put into practice. And I hope that Mira inspires kids to do that. And then in terms of the culture, you know, it's sort of a two-prong thing for kids who are of South Asian descent. We hope that they see themselves in Mira and her friends and her customs and traditions. And for kids who are not South Asian, 
I want to open their eyes to this culture that they may or may not know about. Um, and, you know, we can only really scratch the surface in this show. It's just a TV show. But hopefully by uh, exposing kids to this beautiful and vibrant culture through music, through dance, through the food that we show, through the clothing, um, they'll be inspired to learn more about this culture and be a little more open-minded to learning about other cultures and hopefully pique their curiosity and interest. Definitely. Okay. So this is the coronavirus part of the chat. Uh, <laughs> so I feel like, you know, everyone is dealing with this huge new challenge. Um, and I just have been asking everyone, what are you doing? You know, either you personally or with your family, what are you doing for fun? Are there any things that you've discovered that you like or yeah. Yeah. I mean, I definitely would say we've had too much screen time, which I, Think we're probably not the only ones um, but we're working on it and um, we play yeah there's a certain games that we love to play there's a game that I played when I was a kid called the squiggle game where it's really simple uh, one person just draws a squiggle on a, on a blank piece of paper and it could be like any random squiggle and then the other person has to finish the squiggle and turn it into an into another drawing. Um, that keeps us occupied for a long time, because, uh, and then you switch who's doing the squiggle and who's completing the drawing. And I don't know, it's also like a little bit of an interesting Rorschach test into what your kid and you are thinking about, because like anything can come out of this squiggle and like maybe it's an angry banana or maybe it's, you know, like a, a surfboard, like you never know. And it's interesting to see what the other person finds in that squiggle. So that's important to us, that's a great, great game for us. And then we love Pictionary. Um, we are a big Pictionary family. Nice. Yeah, I've played that game, but it's like you write a sentence and then you oh, yeah. hold it up and then you, oh, the person is only reading the last sentence. And then oh, that's you, like, cool. Like, and then it makes like, the whole, like a whole story. Yeah, cool. it's kind of like a weird Mad Libs with like, you know, yeah. a little bit of connection through the, the, yeah, it's great. Oh, and then Mad Libs, we love Mad Libs too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mad Libs are the best. I know. They They're never just the know. Best. I know. They're so funny every time. Almost every time. Every once yeah. in a while you get a dud and you're like, yeah. oh, I know. And then, and then like if you if everyone's in a really ridiculous mood and it starts getting into like potty humor, like that's fine too. Like it happens and sometimes you need it. Yeah, exactly. That is that's my stance on potty humor as well. <laughs> All right. Um, this is my last question. Um what was your favorite piece of media when you were little? Like, it could be a book, a movie, TV show, a game, anything. Sure. Um, I was a huge fan of 321 Contact, um, the science show on PBS. Um, but my favorite part of it was the Bloodhound Gang, which was... <laughs> You we remember? might be the same age. I'm not sure. Yeah, possible. <laughs> um, so you know what I'm talking about. The Bloodhound Gang was so cool because they were this team of kids who were detectives. And I guess you could probably see some DNA of the Bloodhound Gang in Mirror Royal Detective. Um, and I may have been inspired by a few of their stories and moments and ways they solved mysteries. Um, but I just love the idea of these kids who were on their own, who were detectives, who were really getting into it and really solving mysteries that were important and that mattered to people. And I guess in a way it made those kids feel powerful and important because they were solving problems and doing it themselves. Totally. And I mean, also to add that they were kids of color in an urban setting, um, exactly. which was, you know, Definitely. special at that time. Yeah, and I grew up in a city. So seeing that reflected was also really important to me. Totally. Do you remember the theme song? Uh, yeah. I, it just I, came back to me for the first time in like 30 years. And I'm going to sing it right now. Well, yeah, well, they're on the double. Whenever, yeah, whenever there's trouble, we're there on the double. We're <laughs> yeah, exactly. I forgot to like, you jogged it. Yeah. It's so funny how your mind holds these things and oh, you don't yeah. know. I mean, that's again, looping back to Mira, like we think about that a lot, that, that these, these shows really do hold a lot of power for kids and they're going to get lodged in their heads and, and, and hopefully the positive messages that we're baking into them will stay with them. For sure. And so when they're doing an interview in 30 years uh, on the Common Sense Media, hopefully they will mention Mirror Royal Detective. I can't think of a better place to end. Thank you so much for chatting. Uh, thanks, um, Paul. It was really nice talking to you. Really appreciate it. Thanks All for right. taking the time. Bye.